What's up? Welcome to Backend Stuff. I'm Jacob Blitzo, here to help you build tech for the future. Think about scalability, reliability, and cost. <coughs> if you want to learn how to build scalable, production-ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. This is episode seven in Elixir Basics. Today, we are diving into pattern matching with atoms and how to use them to execute functions. So with that being said, Let's dive right in. Go ahead and hit command space terminal. And I'll go ahead and zoom in to make this easier to see. And let's CD to our desktop before we create a new project. All right, and then create a new project with the mix new. And we'll call this project pattern underscore matching. And then hit enter. And there we go, we have our new project. And now let's CD into this directory. So CD into pattern matching. Let's go ahead and start up our Elixir shell. So IEX space dash capital S mix. And now atoms and equality work as you might expect. So if I did something like this atom saucer is equal to blork false, that's what you would expect. So Using the equal to operator checks for equality and only identical atoms are equal. Now, <clears throat> the equal sign might surprise you a bit. If I did something like this, saucer equals blurk, we get a match error. If you're not familiar with pattern matching languages, this could be confusing. The equal sign means match. So it's called the match operator, which make the thing on the left match the thing on the right. If we wanted to bind a variable to a value of an atom, we could do something like this. We could do S equals the atom saucer. And that works. Now, if I type in S, we see our value saucer there. And now if I did S equals our atom blork, which you should be familiar with already, we bind the variable S to the atom called saucer. Then we rebinded it to the atom blork. So Elixir is an immutable language, meaning values can't change. We are actually getting an entirely new variable that's just also called S. When we rebind S from saucer to blork, we're just getting a new variable back. Now, if we wanted to use the match operator to compare the left side of the expression rather than rebind, we can use the pin operator. So we could do something like this. So let's use the pin operator. And now if we put our variable S after that and say we want it to equal saucer, that's more like it. We tried to match the old binding of the variable S, blork, to the atom saucer and it threw a match error. Now let's go ahead and open up our project. All right, let's go ahead and expand the lib directory and let's delete the pattern matching.ex file. We don't need that. Okay. And right click the lib directory and say new file. And let's make a file called equipment underscore details.ex. And then we have to just go ahead and create our module. So def module. And then it auto completed the name for us. And that is equipment details camel cased. And let's create the function that we've done a few times just so it's easier for us to grab our equipment list. So, so let's do def git underscore equipment underscore list do an end to close off that function. And then we just want this to return the list of our equipment like we have done in the last few episodes. This time though, instead of using string values, we're going to have atom values. We're going to use atoms. So we're going to do colon space underscore helmet, comma, colon space underscore suit, colon snacks, comma, colon grappling underscore hook, comma, and then our probe. All right. And we used atoms instead of strings this time. Okay. Oh, I made a typo up here. Space helmet. All right. Pattern matches can be used in a function clause head so that only arguments that match the pattern will invoke the function. What if we want to create a function that returned details of an item from Blork's equipment list? Let's write a function that will return a tuple with details about Blork's space helmet. So we can do something like this def and then item underscore details, opening parentheses, and then we want to type in the atom colon space underscore helmet. 
and then close parentheses do and then end to close off the function here and we can just do return a tuple so go ahead and do opening curly braces and what are some details we, we might want to know about the space helmet i think weight would be a really good one right so let's go ahead and put in three and now we need to know <clears throat> the unit type here like is it pounds is it kilograms so let's go ahead and also just put an atom of kg so we know that the weight of this helmet is in kilograms right because there's a big difference between kilograms and pounds or other units of measure and then let's go ahead and have the third item quantity blork only has one space helmet so tuples are nice because it can just return a clump of values for us and when you it's not quite necessarily necessary to have a whole object you can use tuples to return small amounts of information so let's go ahead and save this and go back to our terminal and we can recompile so let's go ahead and call our equipment details dot item details function and we're going to pass in the atom space helmet so space underscore helmet closing parentheses enter and there we go pretty cool we get our tuple back let's go back and let's create a function for every piece of equipment that blork has so we need to do def item underscore details and we need to have a spacesuit all right all right so spacesuit do and then we can return our tuple and let's say our, our spacesuit is 16 kilograms and we only have one of those as well okay and then we'll go ahead and make the next ones okay so we just created a function with each piece of equipment that we have in our equipment list to grab the details of and what's really cool now is with the pattern matching if we go back to our terminal we recompile this code oh, it helps to finish typing recompile this code and we can go ahead and now look up space suit and we get that it's 16 kilograms and we have one of those we can also do snacks and we get one kilogram and we have 16 snacks that's pretty cool so what would happen if we type in an item that we don't expect let's look let's look for a jet pack jet underscore pack and there we go so elixir tells us the item that we're looking for right here jet pack and then it tells it shows us all the function heads it tried so we have five function heads that it tried and it didn't match any so it gave us a match clause error right so we can actually tighten up our code and return an error for unknown items so we can control our code a little better so if we wanted to go ahead and do that we can do def item underscore details and we can just do an underscore other close parentheses do and and then basically if it doesn't match any of these other atoms it's going to hit this function and then we can just go ahead and raise an error we can raise an exception here all right so we're going to just say unknown item and return that string okay and now let's go back to our terminal and hit recompile and now what happens when we send our jetpack in boom now the the this time our function raises an exception with the information with more information than just a match error uh, it tells us that it's an unknown item. So we have a lot more control over our pattern matching if we handle an unknown case. All right, so we've learned three ways to use pattern matching. One, to bind a variable. Two, to compare values. And three, to select code you want to execute. And that is pretty freaking cool. So we actually are executing different code for different pattern matching, just calling one function name. That's pretty awesome. All right, so it's challenge time. I think you can guess the first two. One is gonna be write documentation for our functions, 
and two, write tests for all of our functions. For the last part, I want you to write a function that returns a Boolean to check if Blork's flying saucer is under max load for flying. I'll help you get started with this. We're going to create a new file and we're going to call it saucer underscore preflight dot ex. And let's go ahead and make our module. And in this module, we're going to have a private function up here, def, def p, and we're going to call it max flying load in pounds. And it's just going to return 55. So Blork's flying saucer, his max equipment weight, like after his weight, is 55 pounds, okay? So what's interesting is our equipment is all in kilograms. All right, so we're going to have to convert the kilograms to pounds or pounds to kilograms, whatever you prefer. Let's make another private function here and say convert underscore kg to underscore lb and then it's going to take our kg value and it's going to return kg value times 2.2 so pound or kilograms times 2.2 is pounds now with with these little hints i want you to oh let's see i want you to write a recursive loop that will convert kilograms to pounds and then another tip within here um, if you want to access the first value in a tuple you're going to use the function elm for element all right and then opening parentheses and the index you want. So since our kilograms are in the zero index, so it works just like a list, a zero, one, two, and then so on. So if you want to get the kilograms, you have to use element, opening parentheses, zero, closing parentheses, and that will get you the first value out of the tuple, okay? So your hint is use elm zero to access the weight value and then you want to in within this recursive function you want to add the weight together to get total okay and then you're going to make a function down here called def is under max underscore load question mark and then you're going to pass in our list and then in this function, you're going to call your recursive function. So I'm going to make you go back in time a little bit. You've got to write a recursive loop. You need to access the tuple value zero or index zero from that tuple. You need to convert that weight to pounds. And then you need to add the weights together to see if it's less than or equal to the max flying load. So the max flying load is 55 pounds. And then I just want you to return a Boolean value. So return Boolean. So if it's under the max load, you return true. If it's over, hit false. And uh, like always, if you guys need to check out the solutions, check out that GitHub link in the description. And if you have more questions, then that can answer. Join our Discord channel, Backend Stuff's Discord server. I hope you guys have fun with this. If you want to learn how to build scalable, production-ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. See you next time.